first Black History Month edition of the Just Is Easy show. I'm Dr. Chapel Griffin. You know, Black History Month is a celebration of the culture and achievement of people of African descent, and it's celebrated in both Canada and the United States. Black History Month was pioneered by Dr. Carter G. Woodson. Known as the father of black history, Dr. Woodson seemed to understand that no man can seem to understand where he's going unless he's known where he's been and exactly how he arrived at his present place. Dr. Woodson completed his PhD in history at Harvard University in 1912, where he was the second African American to earn his doctorate degree, of course, behind uh, W.E.B. Du Bois. Anyway, convinced that the role of African American history and the history of other cultures uh, were being ignored or misrepresented among the scholars, uh, Woodson saw a need for research into the neglected past of African Americans. Thus, in 1915, he was inspired to create the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History. In 1926, Dr. Woodson initiated the celebration of Negro History Week, which corresponded with the birthdays of Frederick Douglass as well as that of Abraham Lincoln. Flash forward 50 years, in 1976, the celebration was expanded to include the entire month of February. And today, Black History Month garners support throughout the country as people of all ethnic backgrounds and social backgrounds discuss the black experience. Joining me today to talk about Black History Month and African American studies, as well as some really important uh, things that he has on his calendar, is Fresno State University Professor Ellis. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. Good to be here. All right, great. You know, Fresno State is my alma mater. That's where I got my doctorate degree. Great. In what field? In educational Education. leadership. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. so, so talk to me about what you teach over there and how things are going. I'm a professor of theater arts at Fresno State. I have a couple of specialties. One of my specialties is African American theater. And uh, also I teach acting. I teach directing. I teach acting for film. And I teach uh, African American theater. So a lot of people say, well, what's African American theater? I mean, mm -hmm. is that like black? Black people, do they act differently from white people? <laughs> well, they do. They actually do. And it's kind of, it's the, in a nutshell, if you go to a black church and then you go to a white Catholic church in Massachusetts, you're going to see two radically different kinds of Christian, Christian worship sure. services. Sure. So, and when you hear blues, or when, I just, by the way, I just saw a movie, um, I don't know if we're in a, if we can announce that, but I saw a movie with Kevin Hart and um, just a couple of nights ago, and it was interesting because Aretha Franklin was singing an operatic song. And the opera expert, you know, this stuffy white guy, he was like, well, who's that singer? I never heard of that. And mm -hmm. he's like, this is Aretha. Absolutely. Actually, it was the other way around. She's Kevin Hart didn't, didn't know that she filled in for Pavarotti uh, uh, some years ago. I saw that in the tribute. There you go. Exactly. Well, that's, uh, that's featured in this movie. Awesome. Um, so but the point I'm making is that um, there are differences in what we bring as a culture to just every art form. Absolutely. Music, dance, theater, uh, the whole thing, the visual art. Photography, the whole thing. So, uh, so this, you know, it's, it's all touched by our culture. Absolutely. You know, you were preaching to the choir, and I know you don't know this about me, but my undergraduate degree is from Florida A and M University. Oh, yes. woo, woo, woo. All right. We'll get into uh, that. Historically black college university, where my major was theater, yeah. and so I have a lot of friends with. Now so is that FAMU? That is FAMU. That's FAMU. <laughs> FAMU Rattlers. So, but let's talk about the um, the African Studies program over at Fresno State. Has that always been, or how long has it been there? Well, now we're we're kind of meandering into another subject. There is a department or a department unit. It's not exactly. It's a it's a program called Africana Studies, which okay. used to be called Black Studies. Okay. But it's basically the study of African Americans in Africans in America, basically okay. Black Studies, and that's. Um, this is confusing because I am the chair of that department, okay. although that's not my field. My field is in African-American theater. Okay. Uh, but black studies includes history of African-Americans, sociology, of uh, psychology, all of these uh, uh, academic disciplines as it applies to black folks. Okay, so let's meander back to black theater. How okay. We, let's okay. stay in that thing. Okay. All right, so we're talking um, plays like... Oh, well, A Raisin in the Sun. A Raisin in the Sun is classic. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Fences, August Wilson's, which just people know of it now because the masses know of Fences now because Denzel just did the movie. Absolutely. But, you know, 25, 30 years ago, it was a play that ran sure. on Broadway, did quite well. Um, 
There are a number of other African American plays. The Color Museum. Wow. Hands not uh, hands too short to box, box with, with God, God which I tried to get the rights for to do at Fresno State, by the way. Is that right? But the uh, the writers, one of the writers died, and the other one is not able to grant the license to do it because she has to do it with a partner. So I've been trying to do that play in this city for twenty years. Wow. Yeah, can't get it. But yeah, that's another example of. Um, and you know, Langston Hughes uh, wrote a number of African American plays that were Absolutely. set in Harlem. Sure. Um, Simply Heavenly and Little Ham, uh, which go back to the 50s and the 40s. So we've mm -hmm. had we've been doing theater in this country since um, uh, since the early 1800s. Absolutely, yeah. and beyond that, Africans have been doing engaging in theater. In fact, I'd like to say that we created theater because uh, you know if you study history in public schools and U.S. public schools, they attribute theater as beginning in Greece. <laughs> but if you're in the know, you know that, you know, folks in Africa, we've been having theater and cultural rituals and celebrations since the beginning of since time. Since we, when the, when the when Europeans were in caves, basically. Absolutely. We're, we're not supposed to say that, but it's true. I mean, we, pre, true. we predate a lot of art forms and a lot of scientific uh, study, you know, astronomy mm -hmm. and mathematics. You know, that came from the motherland. Uh, the Greek philosophers actually had this study with Africans. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, a lot of times people just don't, you know, especially in the, in the know. Yeah. Well, you know, it's not included in the textbooks. No, it's not. All right, so let's meander. Yeah, okay. That's my new word. Now. That's cool. Let's, let's meander. meander. All right, so I want to talk about the play that you're gonna that you're gonna uh, that's going to run this this uh, spring. This spring I'm doing a show. And, and, and let me digress and just say that this is the first African-American musical, all African-American musical, ever done at Fresno State in the Fresno State's 111-year history. Wow. And we're talking about Carmen Jones. Carmen right? Jones. Carmen Jones, ironically, is based on a European model, mm -hmm. the opera Carmen. Uh, it was uh, written essentially by um, Oscar Hammerstein uh, back in the mm -hmm. 30s. And it's his interpretation of how black folks live and kind of sure. like Porgy and Bess. Sure. You know, Which white is one folks. of my favorites. Yes. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a white person's image of black folks right. and it takes black folks to make it work because you know you can observe us and think you know us sure but uh, you're going to still have to use african americans to do that work that's true uh but anyway uh it's a good show um it's a love story that goes awry you know carmen is an alluring beyonce kind of person and everybody wants to get with carmen and absolutely and uh she's she, a parachute maker right or something well like and that. that's in the movie that's the opera right the opera right. Is that and I, no no the movie okay so the opera she's a cigarette she works in a cigarette factory sure when they turn it into a black story she's a parachute maker right in my uh, interpretation she's gonna this is gonna be taking place at an HBCU like FAMU right on in the south okay in the seventies so we're gonna have big afros oh, wow. you're a little too good. young to know about that sort of thing. It will I guess Bell, I am. <laughs> yeah, right on. Power to the people, leather jackets, <laughs> power to the people. Uh, and I haven't quite figured out what, we, we don't really need an industry per se because she's going to be on a college campus. Okay. So their industry is That's that their students. Take. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so but, but Joe is still going to be in the Army. He's going to be in ROTC. Joe's okay. the boyfriend. Oh, so I know. We're, so we're going to keep the, the, the military thing because he has to leave the military to run off after Carmen. So we're still right. keeping the major themes. We're just altering that cigarette factory and that parachute factory a little bit. So correct me if I'm wrong, Professor Ellis. So Carmen is that character who seduces like someone else's boyfriend, right? She seduces Joe. Joe. Yeah. Right. And there's murder involved as well, right? There's a couple of murders. Yeah, and I just wanted to mention oh, to you our may audience. Not want to give it away, huh? No, no, I can give that away because it's based on the opera. Right. Uh, <laughs> there are a couple of murders and, and I want to also say that this is one of the few productions that I've ever done at Fresno State that's essentially for all family, all family members, because oh, typically there's too much harsh language in my play, or too many, too much uh, sexual innuendo. Although sure. you know, I'm not saying that that's what the sort of thing I'm trying. But that's in in our literature. Sure. So if it's in the literature, that's what I'm doing, and so I don't and I don't pull any punches. In fact, I did Color Girls here a few years ago. And it's oh, just great. A little thank you. It's a little anecdote. <laughs> I did Color Girls here at Fresno State, and you know this is. Hard hitting, hardcore. Oh, I know. I'm black. familiar with that one. Okay, so you know, language. Uh, the story does, deals with abortion. It deals with there's a lot of harsh language. Sure. It's female centered, female centric. 
Sure and um, some friends invited some other friends that I wouldn't have invited. You know, I know my audience. I know mm-hmm. the African-American audience that I have to deal with. I know it pretty well. Okay. And I know I'm not going to invite a whole bunch of church folks. Oh, my. To color, to, yes. well, not color museum, but color, pur- I'm, right. color purple, but uh, for color, color girls. girls who I'm not going to do it because, you know, a lot of them just... You know, Fess Ellis, we don't do that kind of thing over here in the in the black church over here. Right, you know? right. So if some friends invited some more friends, and then, and I when I as soon as they walked in the door, I thought, oh, they're gonna freak out because, and I'm not gonna change anything. Right, you have to maintain you know some truth in terms of the playwright's exactly. vision. The playwright's man. If you write the play that mm-hmm. way, I'm gonna leave it that way. Absolutely. <laughs> so um, and as soon as they walked in, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, my reputation, because essentially I go through a lot of work to keep my audiences kind of segmented sure and that wasn't a show for sure. you know holiness when you people. advertise it did you put like a little disclaimer I, definitely on it, language? strong language adults i just did um sure. uh, uh richard wright's um native son right right that, w- that was adapted to the stage recently a second adaptation and it had some very strong a sexual innuendo for sure uh, and that wasn't for everybody people still professor ellis uh was all that in the play? It's all that really necessary, Professor Ellis. <laughs> and I'm saying, you know, look, it's, it's in the movies. It's like, in I mo- didn't write it. <laughs> right? Exactly, exactly. So this play, Carmen Jones, is, is kid friendly. Mm-hmm. There are a couple of murders, but there's not a lot of blood and gore sure. and, and that sort of thing. Uh, there's no harsh language at okay. all. And there's no sex, there's no, no real violence, except for the two murders right. that we're going to kind of. You'll find a creative way. I'll find a creative way of, yeah, creative way of yes. doing that. Yeah. Absolutely. So this is a musical. Yes. So um, I know that you had the auditions uh, January 22nd and 23rd, right? Exactly. I'm still seeing people by, um, if um, our viewers are seeing my phone number on the screen, I am doing a few uh, inter, uh, uh, interviews for people that missed the auditions because I am using Fresno State students. And um, the community. And really? the community. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, community people. And people from other schools are encouraged to uh, audition. I have about dozens of parts, have mostly mostly in the choir, though, because the the leads are pretty much taken. Oh. But um, but I mean, I still have oh. some open leads. I mean, I have the boxer. What about what about a part a part of Joe? Has that already been? Joe Joe has not been cast. Who's the boyfriend? Right. And uh, Husky Miller, who is the other boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Those two have not been cast that's, yet. Is that that's the boxer, the boxer? The boxer. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, right, so there is some if, hope for me. And there's some hope for people, you and people in the community, if they can sing, I need a tenor and a, a second tenor baritone. I am a baritone tenor. I, I have that whole range. Now, can you sing, though? Oh, my God, I yes. mean, well, you know. I, you, can, I was a musical theater major. Really? Absolutely. Okay, all I'm right, saying, all right. Well, then we, we'll talk when we go off the air. I was we'll going to say, don't make me start singing. All right, so. Um, Do you know the song? Tori Adora. I don't know that song, but, you know, I read cheap music, and, and, but, and, I, and I saw the movie, and, I, and so I'm familiar with it. So the reason I'm on your show now is so you can, so you can get a lead in my play. That <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the whole reason. You figured it out. <laughs> you figured it I out. I get it, I get it. Right, I get Professor it. Ellis. I've been uh, bribed before, it's all good. <laughs> So for community members who are interested, how do you, oh, okay, it's, it's being shown now. So if you're interested so. in joining the cast of Carmen Jones, you will contact uh, Professor Ellis at the information, at the number that's listed below. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, anything else that come, that's coming down the pipeline, do your, your students, do you have students who direct plays and that kind of thing? Actually, one of my students uh, that graduated from Fresno City and then Fresno State, she's interviewing at a number of schools, Yale and um, UC Irvine. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of my former students go on, mostly actors, not directors, mm-hmm. but a lot of them go on. As a matter of fact, I'm bringing one of my former students back to Fresno State to play the lead in Carmen Jones. Oh, um, that's good. Bri- Briere Tinder. So a lot of people that have seen some of my plays in the last seven years, they will recognize Briere. She's, she's one of my top actresses. Nice. Uh, and uh, she's coming back to, to do this again. That sounds great. I guess where I was going with that, when I was a theater major at Florida A&M University, um, the theater department, um, a part of the program required that students take you know, oral interpretation and, and like uh, directing and those kinds of things. So I wondered if, if there was a time in the year where student-directed uh, plays are running so that I can we, drop in and check some of them out. We do have student-directed plays. They typically don't do African-American plays, though. I think in the in the many years that I've been there, we've done maybe two student directed, uh, maybe right? three. 
uh, student-directed African-American plays, and that's only because the drama department has a small African-American population. Okay. If there are more black people in the drama department, then the student-directed plays would be more um, voluminous. But uh, gotcha. right now, um, not so much. Sometimes I'll mentor a directing student and have them direct a, a black play through the auspices of my black theater class. But okay. we actually have a student director program called ETC, okay. and those students typically don't do African American plays. Nice. Yeah. And so, of course, I'm kind of thinking back to when I was at. So we we had to um, we choose our own plays, and mm -hmm. I think one mm -hmm. and mine wasn't a, an African American play. It was called Goodbye to the Clown, and you know, a couple mm -hmm. days before uh, the play was to run, a couple of my lead actors got into it, and I had to find mm -hmm. a replacement. I had actually used my girlfriend at the time, to, so it, it got really messy because of egos. Like that's drama. That's drama. Yeah. It's drama in drama. <laughs> drama in drama. Were they black? <laughs> oh yeah, they were. Oh, there's more drama. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's black drama. I, right. Listen, I can write a book on that. I understand your your pain. I've done that. That happens all the time <laughs> yeah, with this show right here. There's going to be a whole slew, and I'm not trying to be negative or, or make or jinx my show, but that happens. There's going to be someone that has, has to quit the show. Yes. Somebody's going to get mad at somebody's boyfriend or girlfriend, and there's going to be yeah. some bad. Not much. And I'm going to try to discourage that and, and uh, suppress that. But that's a part of what we it do. It totally yeah. is. That's what and we so do. you're mature enough to handle it, but at, I think I was probably 20. No, you wouldn't oh my know. God. At the day before the show, I had to actually get my girlfriend and someone else to play the same character. So I had to buy them. It was creative thing. You know, I found La Last minute changes. Outfits. Yeah, right. absolutely. I did a show here <laughs> about three years ago, and the, the lead actress, there's only four people in the play, the mm -hmm. lead actress about 10 days before we opened, she just couldn't do the show. I had to literally get one of my mm -hmm. other former actresses, one of Briere's contemporaries, by the way, Deja Thompson, who's they're really dying up. Both of them are neck and neck. But she, I had to bring her up from L.A. to play the wow. lead. And had you seen that show, she had about 10 days of rehearsal, wow. maybe less. And you wouldn't have known that's it. Talent. Yeah. That's talent. Yeah. That's where that talent kicks in. Yeah. Well, exactly. So we, we do a good job of training our, our students. The program that I came out of at Sac State, we had a, I had a black mentor. So uh, he realized that I wanted to be an actor and also a director. Okay. So he personally made sure that I took a lot of directing classes and a lot of acting classes to help build my own personal career path. Um, and I kind of do that now, but most of my students want to be actors. People don't realize all the work that goes into being a director. They think that you can just be a director and or yell at people. they think it just falls together by itself. Oh, my God. I remember having to analyze the script and <laughs> look for the major dramatic question, all that kind of stuff, and, and then try to make sure that that's uh, yeah. easy to see. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Can we meander to Black, um, meander. Black, yes. Black History Month? So part of what I always like to talk about, my soapbox issue, is to try to close the achievement gap. And I really think there are a myriad of reasons why it exists. Mm -hmm. But now that it's February, I think that it's appropriate to talk about the fact that, um, you know, there needs to be some changes in terms of curriculum that our students are exposed to in order to engage students of color. I, I really feel like that's a huge piece of it. Um, I think that students sometimes, students of color are not connected. And so... I wanted to ask you for your expert opinion. Okay, so, th yes. We have an issue with K-12 education. I'm not, I'm not bad-mouthing K-12 education. This is, you know, Education in America is touted as the one of the best pro uh, kinds of education in the world, theoretically. But uh, if black curriculum and, uh, and the issues of black life as a part of American life, if that's not uh, uh, strategically woven into the mainstream curriculum, you're going to have these, these, uh, these gaps. Yes. And I'm not just saying African American, just every American, you know, mm -hmm. Native American. Now, the, the K-12 educator is going to say, well, you know, we have curriculum that includes the story of the Native Americans and black, we, but you know. We got Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King, of course. And we, got, um, and we didn't, we just give you a whole month. <laughs> exactly. Because it did used to be a week and then two weeks. Now <laughs> we have a month and Martin Luther right. King. But I, I Students do graduate from uh, high school without um, the same kind of knowledge of our history Absolutely. as they know American history. I totally agree with and you. And you can't tell American history without telling our and history. It's Absolutely. Been, so, uh, you know, I'm not bad-mouthing K-12 education. It's, it's not my thing. Right. But I can say that when students get into college, they're not prepared. 
uh, with regard to this subject. Well, let me tell you, everything that I know about black history, I didn't learn in K-12. I learned in go. upper, you know, in, uh, in, in college. Yes. And, and I'm so fortunate that I attended an HBCU. And I was like, oh, my God, this! if I had known this, I would have sat up so much straighter in my chairs in K-12. That's true. That's true. And I would have paid so much more attention. One more quick point about that is that we're also, as parents are not really encouraging their children to major in Africana or African American studies in college. There you go. Uh, they don't think there's, there's going to be a way to make money, et cetera, et cetera. And I just like to say on the air, Michelle okay. Obama, you know, she was a black studies major. Right. There's several. And then uh, law. And then law, of course. Right. Well, that's just, we prepare students to go into law, Absolutely. to get a PhD, yes. to be, you know, leaders and figures and astronauts, the whole thing. Uh, so black. Um, studies is not the uh, nor is theater. That's not. I can't even get into. It's the same thing. Yes. It's, I mean, not, it's not the same thing, but it's the same school of thought. Yeah. The paradigm is: if you're a theater major, you're gonna be. You're in not gonna make house. any money. Yeah, yeah. you're gonna you're be the poor house. I heard that so many times. But exactly. I had four jobs. But, but they, they'll spend a lot of money to see Denzel or or uh, Will Smith. These are people that are making a lot of money doing this, and and it doesn't mean you have to be a millionaire. But I'm teaching. I'm not right. gonna say how much money I make. It's a little bit, you know. And okay. also, I'm on the black man's salary. You know? uh, oh boy! <laughs> Just one of those too, what, at the but, collegiate level. Oh. Exactly, but okay. the point I'm making is that, that is that you know my parents encouraged me to get an advanced degree. Right they on. didn't care what it was in as long as I got an advanced degree in it because they knew that even if I got an advanced degree in the theater, right. that I was going to be okay. That's right. They weren't going to sell it for a BA in that. Uh, so I was able to convince them, and they said, okay, boy, well, you, you go ahead, but you're going to have to get something else besides a bachelor's in this. So That's we worked awesome. out a deal. But a lot of parents, they won't, they steer their children away. Absolutely. I totally agree with yeah. you. Yeah. We're talking to Professor Ellis. In just a moment, we're going to go to commercial break, and then when we come back, we'll have two more guests. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's good to be here.